Now we have a trailer for season two of Strange New Worlds. That's gonna be coming out in seven weeks. So we have a little under two months until we get to watch a new episode of Strange New Worlds. I thought that it was very telling that they used a song by the Postal Service. I believe it's called Such Great Heights. Not a huge fan of the Postal Service, but everybody's heard that song. I think it wasn't it in a UPS commercial or something like that. But the fact that Star Trek is using a popular song is actually very telling about the tone of the series. Usually Star Trek uses like orchestral music. It doesn't use popular music because this is the future. So using like popular music from this time doesn't make a lot of sense. But if you recall in the JJ Abrams universe, they did use popular music and specifically the Beastie Boys. And they used it to set the tone of that film series as kind of fun and, you know, kind of breaking the rules, stuff like that. And I think that Star Trek is trying to do it again with this song being in the Strange New Worlds trailer, because if you're a fan of the, the song, it's about, you know, leaving your world behind. I think they even put that lyric in text during the trailer. You know, that's the Strange New Worlds kind of thing. You know, every week they're going to a new place that's going to be much different than what we've seen on Discovery and on Picard. And there's a lot of things about this trailer that are different than Discovery and Picard. And I think that that was done very purposefully. But just hearing this song right at the beginning, it tells anyone who's watching this trailer that this show is less niche. It's not as sci-fi as other Star Trek. It can be more mainstream. And that's where they want to go with Strange New Worlds. I think that the first season of Strange New Worlds was really good, but I don't think it's as popular as the people at Paramount think that it really deserves to be. And for some reason, it just hasn't hit the mainstream yet. So hopefully with this second season, it will, because I do think it deserves it. I think it's a great series. So, you know, having a song by the Postal Service, a song that people recognize in this trailer is really a way for Paramount to kind of push Strange New Worlds into the mainstream. Another thing that you probably notice in this trailer that differentiates it from Discovery and Picard is that everything is so bright. The first thing you see in the trailer is the sun. You know, it's just, it's right in your face. So that's telling you again, this is different than Picard. It's different than Discovery. This show is a lot lighter. Figuratively and literally, you're gonna be able to see everything. I know that one of the criticisms of Picard earlier this season, and I know that it's been a criticism of Discovery as well, is that everything is just so dark. The bridges are dark. You can't see what's going on all the time. Showing the sun first in this trailer is just, again, showing the audience that this Strange New World series is different than other Star Trek series. And it's not just more mainstream, but it is brighter than every other series. And you could definitely notice that throughout the trailer. Another thing that I noticed in this trailer was there were a lot of scenes with Una, number one, played by Rebecca Romaine. She does the opening voiceover and she has a couple other scenes with a couple other characters. If you remember the last season of Strange New Worlds, she was off the Enterprise. She was in the custody of Starfleet. So she must get back on the Enterprise pretty quick, which is good. There were some rumors that she might have like a separate plot line during the second season. So she's one of these characters that has a clock on her back. One of these days, she's not gonna be on the Enterprise anymore, but it looks like that day is gonna be later rather than sooner, and that she's gonna be on the Enterprise quite quickly. There's also a pretty cool shot of Ortegas. Ortegas is another character with a clock on her back because we know that she is not a part of James Kirk's bridge on the Enterprise when the original series starts. I know that a lot of people have theorized that she might be the next person to get taken out after Hammer, and that Sulu might be the next character they bring on as a younger character. I hope that it doesn't happen very quickly because I do like that character Ortegas a lot, and I hope that you know her days are not numbered quite yet. I also thought during the trailer that they're alluding to a romance between Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel. In season one, it was obvious that Nurse Chapel had feelings for Spock, but now it looks like she might have feelings for Dr. Mbenga. Both those characters work together and they are on the original series. So having them be in a romance uh, might be interesting. There might be some things that we didn't know going on on the original series between those two characters and they're gonna fill in the blanks on Strange New Worlds. We also got the return of Paul Wesley as James Kirk and they are alluding to a romance between La'an, Nooney, and Singh, and Kirk. That is kind of crazy because, of course, La'an's ancestor 
is Khan Noonien Singh, who Kirk will meet in quite a few years during the episode Space Seed. So having them being in a relationship is a really crazy way to take these two characters. It does look like these two have a time travel adventure on Earth together. You can see in the scene in the trailer, there's like a handicap sign on one of the uh, windows and it's in English. So I'm pretty sure that this is Earth. I wonder if they're going back to the 90s to when Khan Noonien Singh was alive on Earth. That would be crazy. That would be awesome to see and I'm definitely here for that. One of the biggest things we saw in the trailer were Klingons. And to me, they look kind of like the next generation era Klingons. If you follow the original series and also Star Trek Enterprise and to a certain extent DS9, you know that the Klingons went through a change with their look. In canon, they made a reason for why they didn't have ridges on their heads during the original series. Of course, it was because in real life, they didn't have the makeup to do it back then or the budget, but they did do an in-universe reason to why Klingons lost their forehead ridges and some of their like other features. It was because of another virus. So the Klingons that we see in the trailer look very Next Generation Era-esque. So I wonder if this is right before they change into the more human looking Klingons, or if they're just not gonna worry about that anymore and they're just gonna not reference that at all. Maybe they're in the process of changing into a more human looking Klingon. I also noticed if you blink, you miss it. There's a shot of a D7 cruiser, which was the Klingon cruiser from the original series. So that'll be really cool to see. I like the way they've made the old ships look new and these new ships look old, if that makes sense. Another thing I noticed was there was lots of different locations and everything looked different. Not just the time travel scene, but they were on the bridge and then they were in like a dreamscape. It almost looked like they were on a holodeck at one point, but they're really pushing that strange new worlds. Every week we're going to a different scenery motif for the series. And I think you definitely get that from the trailer. Also, it looks like we're gonna get to see Ohura's backstory. There's a shot of her like being very emotional in front of a crash shuttle. And I believe that she mentioned that her parents died in a shuttle crash. And for her to be there like that, that might be a dream sequence or a memory, or again, like a holodeck. They never showed the holodeck until the next generation. That doesn't mean holodeck technology didn't exist anywhere. So they could be on a alien planet or somewhere that has holodeck technology. But, but it is cool that we're gonna see more about Ohura. She is a character from the original series. So it would be nice to get a lot more of her backstory in Strange New Worlds. We didn't get much in the original series or in the films. So having more Ohura makes a lot of sense. It makes her character have a lot of meaning. And it's not just a member berry to have Ohura on the bridge of the Enterprise. There's actually a reason for her being in the show. We're seeing more of her backstory and I'm definitely here for that. There was another blink and you'll miss it moment with La'an face to face with a Gorn. Again, that could be a dream sequence or it could be like a captured Gorn or she could be captured because they're really like face to face. So I don't know what's going on there. It could be her facing her fears. It looks like the Gorn will be the villain for this crew, even though the Gorn, their first contact with Starfleet and the Federation is supposed to be in the episode arena with James Kirk. So it'll be interesting to see how they tiptoe around that on Strange New Worlds if they keep using the Gorn. It was also very funny to see Spock in the big chair on the Enterprise. I don't know if that's his first time in the big chair. You know, what he said was definitely funny. And if nothing else, it shows that this series can be silly. We also saw that in the time travel scene with Kirk not being able to work a revolving door. This, it's okay to be silly sometimes in sci-fi. And that's one of my favorite parts of Strange New Worlds. And it looks like they are not losing that in season two. One of my favorite scenes from the first season of Strange New Worlds is when uh, Pike is on the bridge and he pretends to be a pirate and he, you know, and, and uh, number one is trying not to laugh. That scene is so stupid, but it's so awesome. I just, the fact that that scene exists on this series says so much to me and I, I really enjoy it. And I love seeing those silly scenes. And we get a little member berry at the end too with Kirk mentioning that he's from space. And of course that's a play on another time travel adventure for James Kirk uh, uh, in the voyage home. Seen a revolving door before? I'm from space. You're from outer space. No, I'm from Iowa. I only work in outer space. It reminded me of another scene from that same movie with Scotty when he picks up the mouse and he's like, 
hello computer, you know, <laughs> that doesn't know how to use the technology. Really excited for the season two debut of Strange New Worlds. Let me know what you thought of this trailer. Do you agree with what I saw? Did I miss anything in the trailer that I should have brought up? Let me know in the comments below. Hey everyone, Eric here. Thanks for joining me and I hope that you enjoyed this video. This was taken from my weekly podcast, WDIM News, which you can catch each Monday on this channel. If you would like to check out the full podcast, you can do so by clicking on this video here. Make sure that you not only hit the like button to help support me, but also hit the subscribe button so that you know when my new videos come out. Thank you very much for joining me and I will see you next time on What Did I Miss?